Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. Welcome to my channel. This is our Western astrology or tropical zodiac perspective on the full moon that occurs on January 28th, 2021 at 1116 AM and that's here on the Pacific coast of the US. So for people in like Asia, Australia, New Zealand, it will be on the 29th. Okay, so we have our full moon here. If I can get this all to fit in the sign of Leo, full moon in Leo. Um, in this chart, which is a chart for the event of the full moon or the full moon's birth chart, it occurs in the fourth house. Um, and of course, the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. Full moons bring completion, culmination, awareness, highlighting things, sometimes bringing things from deep within to our conscious awareness, which definitely is an energy of this full moon here. It's bringing what is within, without, so as within, so without, bringing what what gets fired up with this fiery leonine full moon within ourselves within our emotions within us in intuitively as well that's moon energy within our psyches our subconscious what what needs to come to the surface here what needs to rise up and i love how this is just like the moon is like you know this it's on this you know vertical axis here in this chart it's like okay rise up what needs to come out what have you been feeling you want to do what have you been feeling you you'd like to take action on and that action energy here comes from the 10th house energy the without um specifically 10th house is career what occupies your time if you're retired it's you know whatever hobbies you have in your retirement what you like to do um and if you see up here we have a big stellium right we have the sun we have saturn here so saturn's line is actually here four degrees sun and jupiter we have athena goddess of wisdom mercury's sort of here but he's sort of he's outside of this house but we have this lovely stellium here and stelliums represent lots of things but for me significantly they show where healing is taking place um and this of course is as a transit right how this lays on your natal chart will play out a little bit differently but as a passing transit as something ephemeral um whatever emotions arise up out of us out of deep within ourselves this fourth house energy fueled by this by the fiery leo sun-like energy and the sun rules leo right so it's the sun pulling this energy up whatever rises up whatever we feel suddenly fired up to do and there there can be definitely sudden energy here which i'll get to it's part of a healing process and almost this this i think coming out came up a while a few moons ago but it is a coming out energy to be ourselves to redefine our purpose what we want to do our direction in the outside world that 10th house and this is an aquarius the moon is reflecting aquarian energy humanitarian so it's bringing in more humanitarian and i'll say for some altruistic spiritual energy into the stuff we do specifically career work but i feel like it can be whatever actions we take out in the world and there's a healing element here for each of us the individual um Jupiter brings an expansive energy, of course. Saturn helps bring in stability, lays foundations. It can slow the process down. But I feel like the Saturn energy here is going to help us keep us from rushing or even jumping to conclusions for some because there can be sort of that, oh, no, this is what I want to do. And you like do it so quickly and you realize, oh, that wasn't quite right. Um, so Athena's wisdom can come in through mistakes with this energy. And all that is coming in from this little cluster here. I'd call it a stellium, but one is Black Moon Lilith and some people might not. But we have Uranus, Mars, and Lilith here, um, all in Taurus, squaring the Sun and Jupiter, Saturn as well, squaring the Moon, of course. So this is the significant angle aspects going on here so squares yes are sharp edges they can be foundational because a square is very solid but i feel like it's the sharp edge because we got mars here almost like the moon our subconscious our emotions our intuition trying to make a point <laughs> make a point 
and to steer our direction in a whole new way for some or just on a side path for others. Whether this plays out with your actual career or your greater sense of purpose and what you want to do in the world with that humanitarian and spiritual energy backing it up. So Uranus and, and Lilith, the rebels, basically, the nonconformists, with fiery Mars there, Mars action, excitement, passion, also conflict. So this energy, this almost anchors the full moon, as well as the sun and Jupiter and Saturn, right? It's like, suddenly like, oh, this is really what I want to do. Like a memory arises up moon and forth, something from our past. It could be past karma, past life energy as well. And it's like sudden, you know, the sudden like, oh, hey, that's what I want to do. Saturn will say, okay, great. Don't rush it. It might alter. If it's all correct, there won't be any Saturnine obstacles in the way. Jupiter will just help it expand. All right, so this isn't all going to happen on the day of the full moon, right? This is energy putting into play with this full moon energy. And I want to say it will probably play out over the next six months until the Leo new moon, which would be in, in August-ish, six months or so away. So, but be cautious. If you if you rush this, if this, this <laughs> I don't know what to call this, Uranus, Mars, and Lilith, this overexcited, energy especially if it goes against the grain right it's it, it may seem rebellious to other people it's non-conformist it's authentic if it gets overly excited one it can create some conflict but i feel it's mostly conflict within ourselves or we'll butt our heads against things and saturn will say hey slow down and those mistakes those mistakes need to be worked with so don't, if that conflict arises within, don't beat yourself up. Just see it like, okay, I rushed into that. I got too excited, sort of the right direction, but I need to slow down a bit, work with Saturn's energy, right? So if you haven't seen my working with Jupiter and Saturn together video, I'll link that on screen here for you. Uh, check that out. And yeah. Just reassess again. There is a reassessment energy here and that came up in the Vedic reading as well. Um, and Mercury is not retrograde now, but he does go retrograde in a couple of days. Okay, so Minimi has joined us for this last portion. Um, I will read, as I have been, the Sabian symbol from the book, 360 Degrees of Wisdom by Linda Hill. And as usual, I don't read these until I do the video. I just look up the right page and read the title. So the title for the moon, Sabian symbol here, is Early Morning Dew Salutes the sun Sunlight. So I'll just read the oracle paragraph. There are times in our life when we wonder if we can persevere to the end of some ordeal. After a cold and difficult time, you may now be close to the end of your troubles and sensing that the resolution to your problems is imminent. The reward of relief may prove to be transitory, so enjoy it before you move on with the activity of the new day. You may still have some of the same issues to face, but now there is probably more insight into what changes and shifts in attitude, in, into what changes and shifts in attitude can be made. Awakening energies are signaling new beginnings. Taking your shoes off and walking on the grass in the early morning is said to be very good for the soul. Wow, interesting. So that. That to me feels like working with the Saturn energies and letting whatever wants to rise up a new rise up. Okay, that is our Western astrology uh, for this new moon in Leo on January 28th or 29th, 2021. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you back here soon. You want to say bye? Bye.